The yeah. paint the paint's more here on the inside. Yeah, it's on the inside. On the joint. Yeah. Okay. And how long has that been there for? I would say it's been really hitting me for the last week. Okay. And you feel it rock climbing more? Yeah, rock climbing yeah. more is when I feel it. It's like, uh, yeah, when off. I go in at like certain angles, yeah. it's just really hard for me to pull. So yeah. Welcome to Shadow's Table. This is Josh Shadow. Uh, today we're working with one of my favorite clients and friends, uh, Sam, who's uh, my body worker. We're going to show you how to do deep work on somebody who works on themselves a lot, who has great mobility, who does a lot of deep tissue on himself. Uh, I work on him. I'm sure he gets other body work from, from other body workers. And so his tissue is really helpful. He also does a lot of breathing. Um, so he's well versed in relaxing into deep work. Uh, deep work can tend to be painful for a lot of people if you're unable to relax. So what I want to show you today is how to do a deep tissue massage on someone who takes care of themselves, who does a lot of breathing. Um, I'm going to show you how to how I use my body mechanics on how to apply deep work. Um, I do work out a lot, and so I do force pressure a lot. I sometimes use my thumbs too much. I'll try to point out these things that even I know I could do a little bit better. Um, I'm constantly trying to remind myself to use better body mechanics to try not to use my thumbs as much. But I am a person who likes to feel the tissue and get into the tissue. I know that both Sam and I really like to be sort of swimming through the tissue to sort of feel what's going on there and slow down. So hopefully uh, you like this. And if you have any questions, um, just leave some questions in the comments. I'm a bolster under his knees. I've got the heating table on. I've decided to start Sam face up. He came in and requested some extra work on his right wrist on the all side. He's got a little bit of pain here. He's a rock climber. So we're going to spend most of our time today on the upper body. And we're going to spend some extra time on his right forearm. I'm just going to do some opening here on Sam's chest. Just using some soft fists. Just doing some firm circular motions. I'm already kind of trying to see and feel if there are any restrictions in the chest and the pec muscles since Sam's a body worker and he's doing a lot of pushing, pressing I would imagine he's using his chest a lot and his shoulders looking for any differences from left to right he's using my palm sort of smashing the shoulders down outside of the pec, front of the anterior deltoid. I'm just going to look at his neck. Tissue feels nice and gooey. I'm just sort of using my fingers to press up into the neck. The neck can sometimes feel restricted if the chest is tight and rounded. Sometimes the neck cannot feel as gooey if the jaw and temporalis is tight. And most things are going to feel pretty good on Sam since he gets body work very consistently. Checking the suboccipitals, the base of the skull, so the occipital ridge here. I feel some a little bit of tension in there. It just doesn't feel as gooey to me. Tissue feels a little more hard. Doesn't give as much. Sometimes your clients might need some encouragement to breathe. You can always ask them. Just go ahead and take a nice slow deep breath for me. 
We're going to be doing some very, very deep work today, so it might not look like it, but we're kind of warming up Sam for this deep session. Getting him to breathe and sink into the table, let go, just sort of pinching and pulling out, and just sort of exploring the whole upper trap. There's no perfect way to do any of this. This is just what I feel like doing right now. We already got a little bit of twitching on the left side. I'm just not rushing the process here, but sort of pinching upper trap and pulling towards the top of that trap. I might explain to someone who doesn't know what this feels like. They may experience some referral. They may feel that in their head or their eyeball or the back of the head. This does require a little grip strength. So I'll show you other ways to do this. I'm just kind of holding on to that muscle, increasing the pressure. A little bit of twitching there. And I'm not um, using any lotion or wax at the moment. I feel like just doing a little bit of more fascial work. This fascia is already loose. Don't necessarily need anything at the moment. And just following that upper trap along the back side of the neck. And just slowing down. Just on the edge of that upper trap. Back side of the neck. You know, really just early stages of the massage. It's still somewhat scanning, but turn his head a little bit. Maybe if I don't have the grip strength I need, maybe I can do one hand and then take my other hand here and I'm just going to put my fingers on my bottom fingers and my thumb on my top thumb and now I can use two hands. His right upper trap feels a little more disengaged to me. Deep the work, we can go even slower give our clients the best chance to relax into all the sensations. So I'm getting a lot of activity here on the supper trap and I might want to just stay here for a little while. And a lot of these twitches will come from the edge of that upper trap so I'm really trying to pull it off, pull it away. Give it some space. Free it up. You may be asking, well, what does the twitching mean? I think it means the muscle is engaging. It's firing up. See this? Getting nice and red. Getting some blood flow in there. Some nutrients. This is going to help free up his shoulder, and then free up his bicep, and then free up his forearm, and then free up his hand. You can still see him pinching the upper trap, but more so on his neck, until maybe we don't see any more activity, any more twitching. And the muscles feel more supple, more gooey. He has great separation of the muscles already, so it's easy to feel all the different muscles. That's kind of what I'm doing. You can take a nice soft fist here. Give a little fascial stretch. I'm going to pin that upper trap down with my fist and pull with my left hand. This can be burny for some people. It may also just feel like a fantastic fascial stretch. How are we doing with that, Sam? Awesome. Let's try now. Open that right side of the neck. Brachial plexus in there, lots of nerves and scalenes and upper traps and levator scapula. And want to free up that whole quadrant. This would be hard to do on yourself, so it probably feels really good. 
It's something I try to think about a lot. What would this, would this feel good to me? Yeah, this would feel good to me. I'm going to do it to him. Keep riding the fascia. No lotion, no oil. Letting his fascia kind of dictate the pace. Let's go back and check our work. That feels much more gooey to me. So we've made a lot of progress in just a little bit of time. We gotta get to the rest of this upper body, so. Right side here feels better than the left side now, so. You know, once again, I just wanna say, you know, there's no real ry rhyme or reason to necessarily start with the upper traps and the neck. It's just kind of where I chose to start. It's important that you enjoy what you do and you love what you do and not to be bound by some way that you need to work on someone. You can come back to it, can move on from it. It's just feeling and having freedom to do whatever you want. As a body worker, that's something that I kind of lost through most of my career. And working with this guy here, sort of feel more open and free to explore people's bodies without boundary. You don't have to necessarily do what they told you to do in school. You can do whatever you want to do. Once again, just sort of shifting his head to the one side sort of holding his neck, maybe kind of around the suboccipital on the occipital ridge there, taking a nice soft fist and putting it on top of his upper trap and levator area. And those are my knuckles popping, giving him a nice fascial stretch, pulling on his head, pushing with my left fist, pulling with my right arm, Pushing with my left fist. Still grabbing that upper trap there. The back of the neck. And we can see. Just sort of grabbing more of his cervical extensors there. Now this would, might be challenging for some of you without grip strength, so we'll show you a different way to do this another way, another time. Press down on the skull. Temporalis, nice, strong squeeze. The fingers also like taking sort of the palm of my hand and squeezing the head, both sides of the temporalis. How's that feel, Sam? Great. If we have any tension there, can end up in our bodies, in our neck. We want deep relaxation today. Any athletes or anybody who drives hard. I know that Sam is a rock climber and does yoga, um, does all kinds of aggressive athletic feats. And uh, it's possible that as athletes, we can clench when we try really hard. We want to make sure that we release his jaw. Don't know your client as well as I know this client. You may want to check in before you do work like this. Make sure that they can handle it. Make sure that they're doing okay. That they're breathing. That they're not tensing their body while we're working on them. If you don't have the finger strength, you could try thumbs. Maybe some palms. A lot of muscles in the face. Deep tissue doesn't have to hurt. I find deep tissue feels really good. Circle back to the areas we've hit as we progress through the session. That way you kind of know that everything's sort of connected chest here, and arm, just pressing his shoulder, pressing it down into retraction, 
right side almost feels like it wants to fall easier any issues on the left shoulder at all no pain okay does it feel stiffer heavier not necessarily okay I'm gonna use some of this deep prep sometimes this is kind of hard to find but it's a wax so if you really want to do deep work glides uh, I find that using some kind of wax, some kind of beeswax, some kind of synthetic wax works really well. And you really don't need much. I'll probably use about that much for his whole arm and shoulder. You can see it's just a little bit of... Just a little bit of a glide, just a little bit. But I find that it feels better. Just a little bit. Gonna pull on his arm, pull on his fingers. Nice firm grip. Getting all that release. So we're just stretching, fascially stretching his pet out to his deltoid. Down the biceps, right, arms and biceps, and chest and forearms can pull us forward, keep us in this sort of flexed position. We want to stand up straight, shoulders back, head tall. We want to feel strong, confident. Being able to stand up straight feels good. So we want to open up, open the chest, open the shoulders, biceps, keeping very firm pressure. I'm going to start at his elbow and just jostle, jostle his hand a little and make sure he's relaxed. I might take a deep breath. I need to relax as well. It's important for the body worker to be relaxed. My arm is pretty straight. My elbow is not bent. My elbow is bent. It'd be more muscling it. So I'm going to stack my joints. I'm using my core. I'm just sort of remembering to one of the requests is that Sam has a little bit of wrist pain on the ulna side, so I'm keeping that in mind. I don't want to forget what my client requested. It's nothing worse than seeing a body worker and the body worker not even working on what you requested, which is can be pretty common. So you don't forget what your clients want. I'm using a nice fist here, soft fist, but I am in getting into this bicep with my knuckles. I definitely find using the knuckles to be very helpful for both parties. I'm getting some nice twitching there in the bicep. Biceps help flex the shoulders, so we want to engage the biceps to help with that range of motion. Really works together with the shoulder. I don't have to stay there. I can come over here to the chest. Pull up on the arm, make sure he's relaxed. Stack my arm. Pressing down on that shoulder. Nice and relaxed. Coming here with the thumb, a little more specific. Stacked thumb. This is gonna be very intense on most people. So, might not be able to go this specific or this deep on the majority of people. If you don't want to use your thumbs, you can use a fist. You can see how my knuckles are grabbing, grabbing the fascia. Biceps, more specific, getting deeper and more specific, broad to specific. That's kind of how I tend to work. And then I go back to broad. Good, twitching. Twitching likely means the muscle is engaging. It's firing up. 
They're pretty electrical beings. Spacing out these muscles, freeing these muscles. Checking that shoulder, feels even heavier to me. It's just sinking into the table. I can compare it to the other side. It's definitely feels much flatter to me on this side at the moment. Ooh, just checking brachialis underneath the biceps brachii. Maybe a little bit of brachioradialis. I wouldn't get too caught up in the muscle names. You're just sort of feeling what doesn't feel gooey, what feels restricted. I mean, that's something. With Sam's wrist, he said that the pain and restriction is here. So I'm gonna just be looking in the extensors and the flexors. Uh, the flexors feel like they've been working hard. Stacking my thumbs here. Maybe thumb on thumb, make it a little bit easier for me. Lots of restriction in here, might try a fist. I'm trying to get through the layers here. His flexors feel very full to me. There's not a lot of give. Flat elbow. We can check in with Sam and make sure that's okay. Does that feel okay, Sam? Feels good. Okay. Well, this is easy for me. I'm using my core. I'm using flat elbow. Everything feels nice and stacked. I could hang out here all day. I might start using a little more elbow, getting in there line by line. Sort of what I'm thinking is I just sort of go one towards the radius and I just sort of keep making lines towards the ulna. Really sinking in layer by layer, a little bit deeper. Really using my core strength. Really getting behind my work here, using my core. Just grabbing that brachioradialis there. That's got some goodies. If I don't want to use my grip strength, I'm just going to use a forearm here. Trying to follow the muscle the whole way. I could even keep going. Really getting into that brachioradialis now. A little more blood flow in there. Forearm overall just feels very worked. Maybe between the rock climbing and massaging. It needs some relief. That's what we're giving it right now, freeing it up. There's some restriction there. That's on the ulna side. And some good twitching in there, I can see that. Everything's firing up. I'm just pointing out and once again I'm am using a lot of effort to meet Sam's needs. Uh, if you don't want to use your thumbs, don't do it. Use a fist, use a forearm. Well, you can hit the flexors when the client is face down. Sometimes that's a little bit easier, so you don't have to use your thumbs, so. We might come back to this. Flexors definitely have still a lot left in there. Just using my fingers to knead that thumb. This would be another area you can hit when they're face down. This requires me to use a lot of my grip strength. And you only have so much to give. If you do too much too fast, you get tired. Just checking the pec through the covers. You only have so much time and sessions to hit everything, so. This already feels something's going on here. This just doesn't feel supple. It wants to release. Really trying to be in that tissue, feeling it. So 
not really about what technique necessarily. You just want to use the right technique so you can feel it. Tracing the muscles and the fascia. And jostling his arm, making sure he's relaxed. I'm using mostly my first two knuckles. Maintaining consistent pressure in here allows me to feel everything. Some of these muscles refer a lot, so I might explain to someone who doesn't know what this feels like. You may feel some sensations down the arm into the fingers. Remind them to breathe. Anytime the muscles are twitching like that, there's going to be some interesting sensations they're going to be feeling. But just keep reminding them to it's okay, just let it happen, relax, breathe into it. You can do this long enough, you'll be able to feel things with your elbow. Opening this up, pec, pec minor, anterior deltoid, getting his shoulders to sink back more. It's clearly there's something right there. It's gonna be very intense. Anterior deltoid is very intense. Pack, biceps, anterior deltoid, lots of stuff kind of comes through here. You can come in here and once again, if you have the grip strength, we can just pinch the muscle, connect my fingers together. And then I'm gonna be pulling. It's gonna be incredibly tender for most people front row seat to how to handle deep work. Gotta breathe. I'm gonna use two hands. Pull the peck off. I'm spending extra time here because it feels like it needs it. it doesn't feel like the right peck. It's resisting. I'm just connecting that shoulder with the rest of his body. We spent a lot of time there. We kind of want to bring it back together. If I don't want to use my palm, maybe I can use my elbow. Something to point out here is I can work these muscles in a stretch position, or I can work the biceps in a shortened position. I personally find that the muscles engage better when you put the muscles in a shortened position. But there doesn't have to be any rules for anything. Getting specific here. Broad to specific. Good engagements. Lots of good twitching. Connecting to that brachioradialis. We're gonna just take that muscle for a ride all the way to the end. Getting some nice the muscles are twitching like that, most likely you're going pretty deep and most likely it's very tender. And the client should be doing some nice deep breathing. Make sure we're still on tissue, not bone. But bone's okay too. Just being aware of what we're doing. Just hitting some of those extensors towards the ulna sign to make drags. Radial side, down the middle, ulna side. Requires some strength here, some grip strength, so it might make more sense for me to spend more time on this when he's face down. I'm just sort of pinching and kneading. It's gonna be very tender, but probably feel good at the same time. I'm just feeling the shoulders again. Are they laying flatter? So we're gonna hit his flexors here. Now I can kind of get behind my work. And he was talking about some pain in here. So we've got some flexor carpi ulnaris through here. Thumb on thumb. This can get nervy. So we could ask our clients if it gets too nervy, but. Can come in here with an elbow. Smash that 
copy, uh, flex your carpi ulnaris down. And try and have better posture. I'm gonna tuck my chin and flatten my back. Engage my legs. Even after doing this for so long, I'm still struggling to remember to have good body mechanics. So I'm still learning this stuff too. Thumb on thumb. I'm just making lines outside, towards the middle, down the middle. Let's see if I can get even more specific with that area. Right on that muscle. Now we're in it. And I'm gonna take my other forearm. And I'm gonna go towards his elbow. With a little bit more focus on the ulna side. Now we're right on that pronator teres here, which goes this direction. He's going to be using that pronator a lot because he's climbing. Pronation, pronator. I'm giving a lot of effort to do this, but you know, sometimes you have to do that, especially when you care enough. And try to try to get creative and come in here with an elbow. How's that, Sam? Good. Our hands, thumbs do a lot. They do a lot. They can handle a lot. We're just exploring that thumb pad area. I'm trying to remember that you can relax too. Take some deep breaths. You want to stay relaxed so you can give great work. Just sort of squeeze out the hands like a toothpaste tube. Well, we just try to even this out a little bit. Yeah, this side feels more gooey to me already. But he's Sam's right-handed, so maybe using the right side a lot more. It's hard to not do. And then we're hitting that thumb pad again. We want to take care of our thumbs. I want you to just find a good spot. I'm just gonna connect you know, just a little bit of the back and his legs. Just kind of connect everything. So we did a pretty good opening deep tissue session, open the chest, the shoulders, at least a little bit of the neck. You hit the biceps, the forearms, the flexors, extensors, the hands, the thumbs. We made sure we hit Sam's needs, that wrist, vigorously using my knuckles to Hit his glutes and his legs. Noticing some other areas that I'm going to want to hit at some point. Somebody's been doing some work on their legs. Feels like the muscles are firing. That is an idea of how you could do a pretty deep session. When you do deep work, you gotta really pick what you're gonna do. You don't have hours and hours and hours to do this, right? So your client may only have one hour. This session was about 90 minutes. If I only had an hour, I definitely would have um, narrowed my work a little bit more um, or worked through areas a little bit quicker. So as you do more work on clients, you'll kind of figure out that the more detailed work you do and the deeper work you do, part of what you need to do is explain to your clients, hey, I could do a much better job for you if I only focus in a few areas. Instead of doing a little bit of everything, I want to do a lot in just one area. And that's kind of what we did today. I really wanted to open up 
Sam open up his chest, open up his forearms and his hands, hit a little bit of his neck. I think that when Sam stands up, he'll be a lot more open. And I've also kind of palpated other parts of Sam's body and realized that there are some other areas that need attending to. So hopefully this helps. And uh, once again, uh, thanks for watching. This is Shadle's Table. My name is Josh Shadle.